We want to bring in now Rabbi Joshua Stanton. He is here with us. We're happy to have your counsel here in studio with us. Rabbi, we're just really sorry that this is happening to your community, to all of us here in this country. What do you think is happening when you see yet another synagogue under attack like this? I fear that this was another incident of domestic terrorism. And we very quickly jump to the word terrorism when it comes to people who are radicalized based on religion. But these are people who I fear are radicalized based on white supremacist ideology. And so I fear that there is a rise in hate, there is a rise in anti-Semitism, and that there has been a rise in domestic terrorism. My heart goes out to all who have been impacted. They were attending a Yisker service, which is designed to memorialize those who have been lost. And instead, their service became a living memorial to the person whose life was lost. Mm -hmm. In addition, this was not just the end of Passover, the holiday that is supposed to celebrate freedom. This is the same week that we observe Yom HaShoah, the commemoration for the Holocaust itself. Mm -hmm. So this was very carefully timed to inflict the most pain, to invoke the most fear, and to really cause suffering within the Jewish community and within all communities that unfortunately now do live in fear of domestic terrorism and white supremacist hate. Rabbi, let's, let's have the conversation that many people fear, right? And you, you, you went there. When we talk about terrorism and domestic terrorism, white terrorism in this country, uh, people, are, people are afraid to talk about it. And if you talk about it, you're deemed racist or you're, you're un-American. But as, soon, as you said, when it is Muslim, when they believe it's Muslim terrorism, quick to respond, quick to profile a Muslim, I was having this conversation as, as I was coming to the studio. How do you profile the average person who may not look like they're Muslim? They may not be dark skinned. They may just you know, be a brown haired guy that you may just see at, at the supermarket. Why is it, how do you do that? And why is it so difficult for, ha for us to have that conversation, which is desperately needed? There's clearly a double standard going on. The Anti-Defamation League collected statistics on domestic terrorist incidents over the last year and it was an overwhelming majority in the United States this past year that were committed by people inspired by white supremacist hate. And what that means is we need to stop profiling because the people that somehow we conjure in our minds as those who look or seem like terrorists mm -hmm. are in fact not the most likely to engage in terrorism at all. It is people we don't profile, people who are quote unquote normal, mainstream, who statistically engage in most acts of violence. Let me terrorism. just give you some stats, and then Allison can jump in here. When we talked about the, um, the bias crimes, 1,679 religious bias crimes reported, that was in 2017. Allison, I already mentioned that it was up 17% oh. from 2016 to 2017. 58.1 were against Jewish people. 18.6 were against Muslim people, and it is going up. So I just received a text message from my dear friend, Imam Tahir Kukai, from Staten Island. What he said is, we stand with you. And it's because we stood with the Muslim community after New Zealand. We've stood with the Muslim community after acts of vandalism. And so there is, in the midst of a truly horrific moment, the opportunity to build solidarity as never before between the American Jewish and the American Muslim communities. Why, is, why are we in the middle of this horrific moment? Why are more houses of worship under threat and all of this, as we've talked about, um, hideous chatter where people, you know, white supremacists have found each other and feel uh, licensed to be able Bolden. to talk about, yeah. yeah, to talk about this. I fear that politicians have brought hate mainstream in normalizing the rhetoric and normalizing the language and saying that there are good people on both sides after Charlottesville and in failing to stop everything when a house of worship is under attack, to stop everything and just be present with those in mourning. Instead, my fear is that Jews have become like a political ping pong ball. We're just bounced back and forth. We're being used. And instead of being comforted, politicians are enabling us to somehow become targeted much more easily. We don't know, you know, again, and Allison mentioned this earlier, we don't know what the motivation was besides, the, you know, the, the police are saying that it was a hate crime. We don't know what Because he, he was said. shouting and cursing, but right. we don't know what. Right. And, and we don't know if it has any connection to... Um, to the politics that's going on. But I mean, it would be a stretch to, to say that it doesn't. But as a Jewish person, when you hear the excuses coming from this administration, and you hear people walking down the streets, marching, 
openly saying Jews will not replace us and having the administration make excuses for that, how does that make you feel as a Jewish person? It makes me feel otherized. It makes me feel like I am not totally free. It makes me feel as though somehow I could be targeted or our community could be targeted. And our country, the United States, has been so good to the Jewish community. This has been a land of opportunity, a land of freedom. And to see that turn on its head by political opportunists just fills me with profound sadness and frankly, outrage. Have you been feeling more tension at your synagogue? So I've been feeling tension a, a great deal and my colleagues have been feeling tension. All of a sudden we've had to become experts, not just in Torah, not just in teaching, not just in counseling, not just in being with people, but now we have to become experts in security. And as much as I respect security professionals, I did not become a rabbi in order to be an expert in security. And so there is a tension, not just within our communities, but within our very vocations. My calling now includes an additional point of expertise. I mean, the reporting from our, uh, so thus far from our reporters is that some of the congregants had to fight off this person. Maybe in losing, you know, fingers and so forth. I mean, it's just awful, Rabbi. It is a source of ongoing and profound pain. And I think especially leading up to Yom HaShoah, the day when we commemorate the Holocaust, we have to make clear that hate cannot become normalized. Hate cannot become mainstream. Hateful terror among white supremacists cannot win this day. You think it's become normalized? Increasingly normalized. But at the same time, there are text messages from dear imams and priests and pastors and humanist chaplains. There are people coming out in solidarity with us the black community, which has also faced white supremacist terror in such extreme ways this year, has reached out personally to me. A number of uh, black preachers have reached out and they, they give me solace, they give me comfort, and they give me love when I feel empty. Mm -hmm. So the hope is that we can come together as a diverse polity and stand against hate as one. Rabbi Sam, thank you very much for being here during this tough time. Absolutely. Great and to I, talk to you. I do so have to much. say this. I, I believe, as an African American, that the Jewish community and the black community um, in this country have very similar paths, are the most relatable to each other. I mean, we're all Americans. We can all relate to each other. But, but the struggle from the Holocaust and from slavery, it's very similar pain, and it is visceral, and you can feel it. That's why I asked you about the Jews will not replace us. You as an American, hearing someone say that on the streets of a country that you live in, that you pay taxes in, that you have every right to live in and be whoever you are, to hear that is just, it's just infuriating and sad at the same time. My grandfather did not flee Nazi Germany. For me, his grandson, to hear Nazis, literal Nazis, mm. chanting in American streets.